Hello, welcome to Investing with Ellen. In today's video, I would like to talk about the differences between funds, ETFs and individual stocks. So hopefully it will help you make decisions as to which one of these products you would like to include in your investment portfolio. So funds and ETFs both gives you the freedom of not doing the stock picking yourself because um, they both uh, include a large number of usually, you know, more than 30 um, stocks um, for you to invest in. And they normally belong to the same sector or same index uh, or same uh, regions same markets. So they normally have um, particular um, type or category of stocks that you can invest in so that all you have to decide is um, whether you want a, a portion of your portfolio to be in a particular region or a particular type of stocks such as technology stocks or retail stocks or banking stocks so you just need to make that decision and then you can pick the funds um, that uh, invest in a, the corresponding sector or region for you um, and the diversification, um, you know, as I mentioned, these funds normally include 30 stocks or more. So you're, um, just by investing in one fund, your portfolio will be um, pretty well diversified already, uh, which reduces the risk significantly uh, in comparison to you putting your money into one single stock. In that sense, exchange traded funds and ordinary funds, um, i.e. unit trust, are very similar. They both do the same thing. However, the difference is exchange traded funds, as its name suggests, uh, allows you to um, trade or buy and sell the funds on the exchange, just like you would with a uh, stock. Um, and whereas uh, ordinary funds, you don't do that. You normally uh, go to a platform such as Hargrove Lambsdown or Fidelity um, or uh, Interactive Investors and you choose the fund you would like to buy and you place the order and normally you get um, allocated um, however many shares you would like to buy and you get a, a price for that day. Mm, whereas exchange-traded exchange, exchange -traded funds would its price would fluctuate throughout the day just like individual stocks so if you so what price you would purchase the or sell your share in the funds at would depend on um, what time of the day when you place your order um, in reality it doesn't make a huge amount of difference because exchange traded funds price doesn't fluctuate or that much um, as in the case of individual stocks. Another difference between ETFs and funds um, is that ETFs are supposed to be a slightly more tax efficient way of investing into a basket of individual stocks because of its structure. Um, I want to attempt to to explain the technical details of this um, because I'll, as I will explain later, it doesn't actually make a huge amount of difference to individual investors. Um, but I will include a link to an Investopedia article um, below in the description so that if you would like to read a bit more about um, the, the tax efficiency difference between ETFs and ordinary funds, you can follow that link. So to demonstrate my point that um, in reality, really, there isn't a lot of difference between ETFs and um, ordinary funds, I would like to show you a, a comparison between the ETF and ordinary funds, mm -hmm. both of which are tracking the same index, which is SP500. And then from the performance differences, you then would highlight uh, whether they're there are any significant differences that would matter to an investor. As you can see in the two performance tables from um, Morningstar, there really isn't a lot of difference 
between the performances of the SP500 ETF and SP500 index funds, which is an ordinary fund. Um, in fact, uh, in some years, uh, for example, 2017, 2018 and 2020, the index fund actually performed slightly better than the ETF, which is supposed to be uh, more tax efficient. So, um, so I, I don't know, you know, exactly why that is. I'm sure there's some fundamental differences in the underlying cost and running of the two kind of products, but I, I'm an investor, so all I care about is the ultimate return. Um, and by the look of it on the performance table, there isn't a lot of difference. So to me, ETFs and um, index funds, as long as you are choosing a product that's tracking the same index or same sector or same market or same basket of stocks, it doesn't matter really um, which type of funds you choose. And for that reason, for the rest of this video, I will refer to both ETFs and ordinary funds as funds. Next, I will do a comparison between funds and individual stocks. I will take two examples of individual stocks um, to demonstrate some of the key differences um, and factors that I think investors should take into consideration when you decide uh, whether to include individual stocks in your portfolio. So the first one is Tesla. As you know, it had such a stellar year um, in 2020 and uh, its popularity is through the roof. Um, so I thought I'll choose uh, Tesla as an example to demonstrate some of the key considerations. So as you can see on this table, uh, this comparison table I put together um, using Morningstar data, um, Tesla is by far the best, best performer. Um, you know, whether you're looking at one year period, three year period, five year period, or even 10 year period. So if you had held Tesla for the last 10 years, you would have gained a return that's equivalent to 70% per year. That's huge. Um, however, in reality, it's not that simple um, because the 70% the per year is an average return and it's not evenly distributed throughout the 10 year period. So to have that gain, you would have to um, have faith in Tesla for 10 years. And even when it's going down, you would continue to have faith in it and um, trust that it will deliver better return. When looking at individual stocks, it is less reliable to look at a year on year average return. We do need to look at the volatility more. So let's go back to the table, the comparison table before um, for some more demonstration. So as you can see on this table, there is a column called three year standard deviation. So standard deviation simply refers to how much um, a stock's price goes up and down. So it's an indication of the volatility and therefore the risk involved in investing in an individual stock. So as you can see in the table um, for Tesla stock, the three year standard deviation is 76.28 which indicates that um, Tesla share price goes up and down on average 76.28% either above or below its average price. And that is pretty big swings. So to give you an indication of how much Tesla shares uh, volatility is much more than the volatility of the index price of either SP500 or Nasdaq 100. Here is the um, stats that I've gathered from Yahoo Finance. In the 10 year period between 1st of January 2010 and 1st of January 2021, Tesla share price dropped more than 8% on a single day 35 times. And worst drop was 21.06% on a single day. And that happened 
on、um, the eighth of September, twenty twenty. So compare this with S P five hundred and、um, Nasdaq one hundred index prices. We'll see that、um, both indices, respectively, only dropped more than eight percent on a single day twice in the same ten year period. So you can see how much more volatile an individual stock such as Tesla is compared to the wider market. Next, I want to talk about another example of an individual stock, which is called Burford Capital Limited. It's an Australian company、um, in the space of、uh, litigation,、um, and I owned this stock between twenty、uh, seventeen, November twenty seventeen, and January twenty twenty. So、um, when you look at the performance table of this particular stock, you can see that between twenty sixteen and twenty eighteen, for three years it was doing very very well. And I only refer to this three years because that's as far as it goes back on the Morning Star、uh, record. But I do recall when I was、uh, doing my research on this stock in twenty seventeen before I bought it. Um, for the previous five years, he was doing extremely well.、Um, I think it was pretty much it had gone up、um, tenfold in the previous five year period before twenty seventeen, and that trend clearly continued. And I remember in March twenty eighteen, it had a particular good earnings report, and the share went up. Uh, over thirty percent on a single day, which I was very excited about. And from my research, the company had very good books,、um, had good revenue,、um, good earnings growth.、Um, everything was ticking the boxes. And coupled with、um, the the great return on share price, I was very sure that it was a stellar stock and it was going to continue the trend. However, in、um, August twenty nineteen, there is a company called、uh, Muddy Waters Research、uh, released a report、uh, revealing several breaches in Burford Capital's accounting practices, and suddenly the、um, the share price halved on that day.、Uh, I think it was seventh of seventh、uh, or ninth of August. And it halved on that day, and suddenly this stellar stock became the worst in my holdings.、Um, I'm smiling because it was so unexpected. It, it was such a good lesson for me to learn,、um, and for anybody who wants to invest in the stock market, it's one of those examples that highlights the fact that the stock market is totally unpredictable. Because all the research you can do is around fundamentals of a particular company, of how good its its books are, how good it is at making money, which Buffett clearly demonstrated through its books, and、um, as well as how much sort of stock market demands there is. So, which was also something that Buffett Capital stock demonstrated. There was clearly a lot of demands for its stock. Pushing the stock price up, but it clearly does not mean that the stock will deliver the return that you were expecting. So that's always something to keep in mind when you decide whether you should include individual stocks in your portfolio. There is always the possibility of not、um, getting the return or even losing、um, your capital,、uh, even if you have done everything right. You know, even if you have done all the research that you possibly can, your stock could still be hit by a、um, black swan event, totally unexpected. So keep that in mind. I sold Burford stock around、um, about seven pound and seven pence in January twenty twenty, and at the time of this video, which is about a year on, the price is. Still about the same, if not less. So、um, it has never recovered to its previous levels, which was double、um, the level I sold at.、So、lastly, going back to the performance comparison table, if you had held 
Burford Capital for the last 10 years, it would have performed worse than Nasdaq 100. So you can, t you can see from the table that Nasdaq 100 uh, would have returned 3% more each year over the last 10 years than Burford Capital share would have done. However, if you compare um, Burford's the capital's share performance with SP500, for a five-year period, you would have beaten SP500 index performance, but not for the last three years. The last five years, if you held the stock, um, you would have beaten SP500. However, it does come with a cost because if you had held an SP500 index fund, you would have been exposed to a lot less risk than you would have done with the um, Burford Capital share. So that's also something to take into account. Um, performance alone isn't um, the only measure. Always take into account what's the potential cost in terms of risk and how much you're willing to take that risk, how much you'll potential return is worth the risk you know remember no return is guaranteed prior to 2019 um, Burford would have been a no-brainer to hold Burford was by far um, a much better performer than any of the index funds listed here um, this is one of the interesting things uh, and funny things I suppose in the stock market you never know who is the winner no matter what conclusion you come to, um, it is only based on the performance so far. You, you can make future predictions or listen to expert advice uh, or, or uh, opinion of future prediction, but the truth is nobody knows. So always keep that in mind. So to recap on how to decide which product you should include in your portfolio, funds, ETFs, or individual stocks. I have three rules. First rule, um, consider how much time and effort you, um, you have, you're willing and you're able to put into research. So investing in, in stocks involves a lot of research. You do need to have a good understanding of the industry in general. Um, as well as uh, individual stocks, individual companies that you're interested in, um, its founders, the, its books, its fundamentals, as well as the characteristics of its CEOs and management team. Um, so there are a lot to consider. You do need to have a good sense of the promise that this particular stock holds, and that takes time. And you have to be aware that your hard work into research might, might turn out to be actually this company isn't worth investing. Or perhaps you decide it's worth investing in, but later on it, it fails, um, you were wrong as such. So what I'm saying is basically, you know, your hard work and time into uh, stock research could be fruitless in terms of monetary returns. Um, so consider that, consider uh, with all the potential um, wastage, I suppose, um, obviously ignoring the intellectual value um, and emotional value of the research. So, um, you know, after this consideration, how much you are still willing to put in the effort. And also remember, it's not a one-off effort and time spent because once you hold a particular company you do need to do ongoing research to keep up with the news of the industry as well as the company so more time to be spent on an ongoing basis rule number two is to um, consider how much you are able to endure the emotional distress potentially brought up by the um, trading in stocks because in my personal experience, um, especially at early days, when I first started investing in individual stocks, I was checking it every day and I was getting worried and um, fearful whenever the, the stock is going down. Yeah, it was pretty difficult to, to um, 
endure and not get affected by the natural uh, market fluctuations. And it is often when we are letting our emotions um, drive our decisions that we make bad decisions in the stock market. Once you've done the proper research, you have conviction in a stock, it's better not to be um, faced by uh, temporary fluctuations by market news. You do need to assess your ability to sit through the market uh, ups and downs uh, and believe and have sufficient confidence in your um, face in a particular company or in your belief that it will deliver. Um, and a lot of time that confidence or that ability to um, to sit through ups and downs like this comes from experience, comes from um, your willingness and, and almost indifference to uh, the money you've invested, which is why it's, it's quite, um, it's an age old uh, good advice that you should only invest money um, that you don't care to lose. So rule number three is only put money you want to need immediately into individual stocks um, as well as funds and ETFs because the market as a whole could go down too and you might need a period of time to, uh, for the market to recover um, in, in which time it's better not to take any money out because then you lose the opportunity to, for your money to grow and come back. I always keep the money aside, which I will need on a day-to-day -day basis to cover my expenses, um, or I'll put part of that money into very low risk type of investment, um, like, uh, like lending or uh, into some types of accounts where you earn interest on a daily basis and you can have access to your cash anytime you want, which I will talk about uh, in separate videos. Um, so that's what I do. I would keep my money in pure cash, so it's not any form of investment. It doesn't generate interest. It's just cash in my bank account that I have access to. Um, that's enough to cover my six months worth of expenses and then have uh, another six months to a year's worth of um, cash in the type of interest generating investments that um, that has a little bit of risk, but I'm pretty happy to, to take for a smaller gain. Uh, and then the rest of my money will be something that I, I don't need um, for at least a year or a year and a half. Um, and that will be in various funds, um, individual stocks, um, real estate, as well as um, P2P lending. Um, a cryptocurrency. In investment, it's really important to have your basic expenses and needs covered first. Then it will enable you to be bolder with the rest of your um, portfolio, the rest of your money. Um, and to have your basic needs covered also enables you to follow rule number two better because then it enables you to be less emotionally distressed during market downturns. And also this is a very subjective um, test because everybody experiences emotions and distress and um, psychological difficulties or, or sense of rewards very differently. So you you are the only person who can make an accurate judgment call as to what kind of level of risk and level of potential return are you happy with or provides the best kind of balance for you in order to make in order to stay put in the market um, and stay sensible stay sane um, and yeah stay well informed and well researched and not let emotions drive your decisions Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button or subscribe to my channel for all future updates. I upload videos regularly on the subject of investing. I'll see you at the next video. 
Bye for now.